Let me address what has been put by the government on this motion. The, member, the, the minister made one point, and the point is this. Contrary to what he told us at an earlier time in answer to a question, he said then, and he knew then, he knew how many months the delay was. He knew, he knew what was involved. I'm um, a speaker. I really am at a disadvantage. I've sent my documents to Hansard. So I will have to I will have to I will have to talk to Hansard. He, he made one point, and the point is that the vessels were defective, and he made a half point about delays. He did not address I comment to that. He did not address the issue that it was recognized by the government of Trinidad and Tobago, which had not been this government. It was recognized and it was dealt with by the government of Trinidad and Tobago that the contractor, under the terms of the contract, was caused to sign a new agreement. And had I got my documents in front of me, I would have been able to quote for you, Mr. Speaker, all the time. No, we will talk to the press on Monday morning in my office, but I'm just telling you, I would have been able to quote for you where the negotiation that took place in early 2010 saw the government of Trinidad and Tobago raising with BAE the fact that you are in breach by virtue of delays. The BAE was invited to a meeting and I think, Mr. Speaker, they came to a meeting. They discussed under negotiating conditions what would be what would be BAE's liabilities to the government of Trinidad and Tobago. What the minister did this evening is to give the impression that it fell to this government to deal with the entire period of delay. That is not so. By December of last year, Mr. Speaker, the negotiating team that met with BAE negotiated to the point where one of the conditions was a resetting of the time clock on the contract. So for the minister to come here now and talk about 19 months of delay is to expose us to a situation where he does not understand the legal liabilities that Trinidad Tobago is exposed to. Because that period of liability, that period of liability was dealt with by the government that went out of office on the 24th of May this year. And by resetting the clock with respect to the new period, that was a part of the agreement. They set, Mr. Speaker, the whole question of what the liability was per day. I saw the document. It was 20,000 pounds per day after a certain period of time that was negotiated. The, for in, in the case, it was worked out as to what was owing to the government in terms of liquidated damages. The government gave up its right as part of the negotiations to cancel the contract and accepted by signed agreement instead to accept a financial consideration to be paid in equipment and maintenance. That is a government contract that was entered into in April of 2010. So when the minister comes here and tells you that this new government cancelled the contract because of a period of delay from the original contract, he is misleading the country. And that is what the lawyers will deal with. That's what they will deal with. I'm not, I'm not fighting them, you know, Mr. Speaker. They're going to court. And if, if, if what he has just said there is what they're going to court with, then heaven help Trinidad and Tobago.